Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for waking us up this morning. Father, I thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your mercy, for your grace. Lord, I thank you for who you are. You are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning. You are the ending. Father, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity, oh God, to break bread with the believers, Lord, on February 3rd, 2024. Father, right now we put on your whole armor. We cover ourselves, our families, our possessions, our region, our nations with the blood of Jesus. We cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus. We cover those who are watching the replay with the blood of Jesus. Father, we ask for your angels to be released, oh God, to help us. Father God, we repent of any sin that we have committed against you. And Father, right now we get up we pick up our mats and we walk for you. We, we, we deny our flesh. We deny our flesh. We pick up our cross and we follow you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you will speak to us clearly today and we will obey your word. Father, we decrease so that you can increase in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to do. We ask, oh God, that you will save our households and save those around us. I pray, oh God, that you will speak clearly to us regarding our situations, oh God, that we are dealing with. And I pray, oh God, that you will give us godly wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I pray, oh God, that we would please you all the while this day and every day on repeat. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, O God, that we're here to worship you in spirit and in truth. All this I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You have to share your secret. You really are. I don't know how. How do you do it? I don't know. I need to share. No, you know what? I think doing it um, after intermission will be a better time because the concert is going on, and I guess people are going to want to. Whoa. What was that? a little later. Here's my paperwork mm -hmm. with my notes. Awesome. Oh, I see that you added. Renee, I told you a month ago that when we took this case, we were in over our heads. I respect how you feel. Do you? Yes. She's going to be just fine with our agency. This case is just taking us over our heads. We've had four families in one year. Four, Renee. But you never really accept the reality. <laughs> I'm out. You know, the two of us share more than just a name. I used to have a stuffed animal too. Almost like this one. Oh, I kept a lot of stuff in. Just like you. All that bottled emotion kept me mad at a lot of people. I didn't know how to let it go. I was placed with a family that I really didn't like. But there was a man that really, really loved me. And he became my father. And one day, he took me by the hand.
Thank you, Lord, that you are the father of glory. Powerful song. We thank you, Father God, that your presence is with us. Your Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. We can feel the weight of your glory. I thank you, Lord, that we are surrounded by your angels. They encamp all around us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And so victorious ones, like I always say, go ahead and take out your notebook, take out your journal, take notes, because the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you and you want to make sure that you don't you know, forget what he said to you. This is being recorded. Thank God. So you can always watch the replay, but it's also good to write things down because that's one of the ways that we learned and remember things is the writing. All right. So let's keep on going. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so our prescription, um, prescription, yes. Our prescription for today is Luke 13 and verse 12 upper scripture. And so it says, when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. That's the NLT translation. The American Standard Version says, and when Jesus saw her, he called her and said to her, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And the Berean study Bible says, when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, woman, you are set free from your disability. And so we know in life, you know, we're dealing with different disabilities, but we know that our God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or imagine because his power lives on the inside of us and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, okay? And so there go the warfare, right? God's word, says one thing, but then our flesh and the world and the enemy will try to come and to fight against, you know, what God said, but God is powerful. Amen. He is El Shaddai, Lord God almighty. And so right here, Jesus said, you are set free from your disability. I don't care what the enemy was trying to do to, do to you. I don't care what the enemy was trying to do to you. I don't care what life has been trying to do to you. I don't care who has been trying to oppress you, block you or whatever. What God says, right? That's the final word. He said, woman, you are set free from your disability. The same way in Genesis one, God said, let there be light and there was light. Before that, the earth was in chaos. But when God showed up and spoke, the earth, the world had to line up, had to respond. And so no matter what's going on in your life, you get the word of God in your mouth and speak it because you shall be able to decree a thing and it shall be established and light will shine upon your path. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. And you're able to speak those things that be not as though they were. And so Jesus spoke to this woman and she was set free in the name of Jesus. And so I want to show our press multivitamin before we even go into the word. I thought this was awesome because if people can give you good gifts, imagine the gifts that God is going to give to you. Amen. And so I wanted to show these short videos before we go into the word. You know, God sees you, victorious ones. He sees you and he will respond. He sees you and he's going to meet the need. He sees you and he's going to bless you. You are inscribed in the palm of God's hand. Amen. And nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. God's eyes are upon you right now, wherever you're at, whatever you're going through. God is showing up the same way Jesus showed up for that woman and spoke to her situation and delivered her. 
God is doing the same thing for you, victorious ones. But you have to have faith to believe and to receive. Amen. Okay, so here's the first video. This dental assistant was a few days away from her 20th year working at this orthodontist when her two bosses called her to the front to talk to her and she was nervous that she was in trouble until he told her that they wanted to give her some money to celebrate how many years she's put into their business. So they did this. How many years have been? 20. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> So the same way she got her blessing right there. This Listen, dental assistant was God a few. God do the same thing for us victorious ones. You know, the Bible says God will reward you, right? He rewards those who diligently seek him. Now this lady, she was working at that particular office for what, 20 years? And look how they just surprised her, you know, and blessed her. But even with what we just saw, God said he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or imagine. So if you're seeing it, thinking about it, God's going to do it bigger. So 20,000 she got, listen, abundance, whatever it is that you need. And see, they're only rewarding her for 20 years that, you know, that she's been there. God knows everything about you, victorious ones, right? He knows what you stand in need of. Physical healing, marital healing, parental healing, whatever it is, God's eyes are upon you and he's going to do it for you exceedingly and abundantly in the name of Jesus. This is the other video video I want you to see. This is the other video. You do it, sweetie! <laughs> I got you a present here and what's inside this present is gonna change you and your daughter's life forever. Oh my God! <laughs> I got you an apartment! I got you an apartment! <laughs> oh, sweetheart! I don't know how much this means to me. I'm blindfolding you, and I'm about to show you your apartment, okay? Take your blindfolds off. <laughs> Look at your new place! I don't have to worry about sleeping outside. God is so good. She was homeless, y'all, with a baby. And God sent somebody to give her an apartment. Ha! He is Yahweh Jireh. He's the God who sees you. And he will provide a ram in the bush for you in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. All right, so let's get in the word, victorious ones. God sees you and he will deliver you. So in Luke 13, it says, um, starting at verse 10, on the Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. Whoa, 18 years. And she, you know, she was bent over, bent over, right? And she could not straighten up at all. So when Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. And so the Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her. And so when he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted um, with all the wonderful things he was doing. Amen. Now let's, let's go ahead and break this word down, victorious ones. So this woman had been going to the synagogue, right? We go to church. 
so she was faithful, right? Sometimes you're doing the right thing, but you will still meet challenges. You will still have opposition. She was doing the right thing. She was going to the synagogue, right? Just make sure you're going to the right church, a church that's teaching the word of God, a church that's flowing in the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes you get stuck at a religious church where man is in control and their agenda, not the agenda of God, okay? So she was going to the synagogue, Doug, right? And I'm like, wow, she was bound for what, 18 years? That's a long time. And so victorious ones, you're going to have to make sure that you are really walking in the fruit of the spirit. And one of the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit is patience, right? You're going to have to be patient because some battles are long, right? Are longer than others. And so you're going to have to make sure that you are patient, be persistent, continue to go to God, right? To help you cry out to God. Even though sometimes it seems like some things won't go away. Keep on going to God, being patient. And I'm talking about pay, being patient. I'm talking about having the right attitude as you're waiting for your breakthrough. Not settling, but having high expectation. But continuing to walk in the fruit of the spirit. Continuing to read the word of God. Continuing to pray and fast, right? So be patient because your God is coming. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So your waiting is never in vain. And so also you want to look at the, the story and see this lady, the enemy tried to put the wrong posture on her. Life will at times try to put the wrong posture on you. The Bible said that she was bent over and could not straighten up at all. And so the enemy, right? want to put you in a position where you're bowing down to just the problems, bowed over, crippled, bowing down to all the stress that's coming in your life. That is not the posture of the children of the most high God. God is the lifter up of your head. You're not supposed to be walking in life, living your life bent over and can't seem to make it because if you're bowed down, you know, bent over and, and, and can't straighten up, right? You can't get much done. God is the one who lifts you up from the ash, right? And give you that posture of the Lord where you are walking and not being weary, right? You're running and not being weary, walking and not fainting, having that confidence in the Lord. She was bent over. How could you even see what God is doing if you're bent over by your problems? That is not the posture that we want to have in our lives. Even when you're going through, keep your head up. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help is coming from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The only one you're bowing to is God, right? And so make sure you have the right posture. Also, as I was reading this, I'm thinking sometimes when you're going through a, a, a long battle, victorious ones, People start to associate you with that problem or those problems or those issues. They start to see the issues and not you. People start to see the issues and not the individual. And so this lady was going to the synagogue, right? Year after year after year after year after year after year after year. And so people are just like, oh yeah, that, that's so-and-so that's crippled and bowed over. Right, they, they begin to address you based on your pain, based on your disability. And they forget about you. They see your pain, but not you. They see your issues, but not you. Amen, and we have to be, be very careful of that, victorious ones. And so what I love about Jesus is that he saw her. The Bible says, right? She'd been going there. It's a spirit that she was dealing with. And in verse 12, when Jesus saw her, God sees you, victorious ones. Amen. God sees you. And so it says that he could, that he connected with her, right? He saw her. Amen. And then he called her over, right? Talking to her, right? initiating that relationship. So he saw her, he called her forward, right? 
he spoke a word of blessing and deliverance over her, but then he also put his hand on her. He put his hands on her. The Bible says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, touching and agreeing, God said, I'm there and I will do it for you. I will answer your prayer. And so that covenant, you got to be careful, right? Who you are connected to, victorious ones. This lady was going to the synagogue and nobody, see, nobody could help her. But then when she got that connection with Jesus, power was released and she was healed. The same thing happened with the woman who used to have an issue of blood, right? The connection. This woman had, she had faith, this woman, even though she was going through that long battle, the same thing with the woman who used to have an issue of blood, they had faith, the faith to be healed, right? They didn't give up. She could have said, you know what? I've been going to, to the synagogue year after year after year and nothing is happening for me. And she could have given up. The same thing with the woman who used to have an issue of blood. They took her money. The doctors took her money and she was not healed because she was also dealing with a spirit of infirmity. But then when Jesus showed up, the greatest strong man, right? When he showed up, those de that demon had to go. At, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that he is Lord. So that infirmity spirit had to leave because the greatest strong man showed up, Jesus, and he said, woman, I say to you, you are set free from your infirmity. Amen. And so she was set free. And the Bible said, she, when he put his hand on her, immediately she straightened up and praise God. Amen. And you would think everybody will be happy for her because she had been sick, bent over for 18 years. You would think everybody would have been clapping and saying glory to God. But here come the haters. Right now, everybody wants you to be able. They prefer you to be disabled and crippled. And so the, 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 the synagogue leader began to rebuke Jesus. There's six days for you to work. So come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. No wonder this woman was bound. Look at her leader. Make sure your leader is a godly leader. God fearing woman and man of God. He is rebuking Jesus for helping this woman. And Jesus had to say, listen, you treat your animals good on the Sabbath. Shouldn't this daughter of Abraham be blessed? And some people love their pets more than human beings. Then should not this woman, a dog, um, excuse me, it says, then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? Glory to God. I'm over here looking at the dog, our dog. He done stole my communion bread. Walked off with my bread, y'all. That's why, that's why dog, dog slipped out. The dog done took communion, y'all. But back on track. Not everybody was happy for her. Because some people prefer to see you disabled rather than able. Because some people had the wrong heart. Some people are jealous. Some people are disabled themselves, disabled with the wrong spirit. Because how could you be mad that this woman got set free? But you're the one who will bless your animal on the Sabbath, nonetheless. And so Jesus checked them. Now don't get it twisted. Because sometimes people devalue you when they see that you don't have much to give. That you're, you're burdened down by problems. You have issues. You're crippled. You're paralyzed by life. You have no money. You live in a shelter or you drive the, the worst car. You have no car or whatever. They, they begin to, to size you up and put you in a category where you are sig insignificant. They think you're insignificant. But that's not the case with God. This woman's, listen, Jesus said, this is a daughter of Abraham. And we know who Abraham was. God loved Abraham. It all started with Abraham who believed God. And God said, you're righteous because you believe me. 
And this woman right here, she had faith to show up over and over and over again and, and leave them disappointed that she didn't get her breakthrough, but she never gave up. And when you, oh God, when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all that you need will be added unto you. It might not look like it right now, but best believe God's word will not return back unto him void, but it will be accomplished. We are the sons and daughters of Abraham. And the enemy has been trying to keep us bound with different situations. But the Bible says you shall know the truth and be set free in the name of Jesus. And he whom the son has set free is free indeed. It doesn't matter what day it is. Healing is available to all of God's children. Listen, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Glory to God. You are a priority to God. These people, their, their animals were more of a priority than the human beings. But I'm here to let you know, God said, from disabled to able, you're getting ready to see a shift in your situation from fear to faith, from depression to joy, from chaos to shalom peace, from pride to humility, from worldliness to godliness, from infirmity to wholeness and health. From deception to truth. God is switching. God is turning things around, y'all. Maybe you had setback, God said, setbacks to breakthroughs. Expect it. Hopelessness to hopefulness. Matt carrying you to you're carrying the mat. Get up, pick up your mat and walk. Because when you go to God, your situation must change. The man was on the porch with other sick people in John 5. And Jesus showed up. He was there for 38 years. And Jesus asked the question, do you want to be well? And even though he didn't even know if he wanted to be well and making excuses, Jesus said, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Because when you go to God, God's power is going to be released and you're going to receive deliverance if you want it. In the name of Jesus, God said from powerlessness to powerfulness, from dishonor to honor, I'm rewriting your story. From failure to success, from poverty to wealth, from worry to worship. This lady had no idea that when she was getting dressed, that this would be the day that God was going to shift her situation. She had no idea with the woman who used to have an issue of blood, she went and sought Jesus to touch the hem of his garment. In this story, Jesus went and sought after this woman. And God is coming to see about you, victorious ones. Continue to do the right things over and over again. Because God has not forgotten about you. He said a woman, a mother can forget the baby at her chest. But he said, I will never forget you, Isaiah 49. You are inscribed in the palm of my hand. I'm coming to see about you. I'm going to meet you at that place where you are faithful. I'm coming to meet you at that place where you thought I forgot about you. I'm meeting you at the well. When I'm done with you, I'm going to transform your situation in the name of Jesus. The same way I, resp I responded to Job. The same way I responded to Job. And I showed up and I turned the captivity of Job and gave him twice as much as he had before. I'm coming to see about you. And I'm turning your disability into ability for my glory, saith the Lord, in the name of Jesus, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. This story is so powerful. You can be going through years of poverty, but you're continuing to, to, to take care of the kingdom, being faithful to God. And in the blink of an eye, by the snapping of God's finger, God will turn your situation just like that. In less than a minute, Jesus saw her. He knew her because God knows us by name. He knew she had been there for, for 18 years, bent over, couldn't straighten out her life. Some people are bent over by addiction and you can't straighten out your life. Bent over by perversion and, and it seems like you can't break free. 
bent over by failures, disappointments, and depression, and health issues, bent over by, by, by whatever it is that, that, that maybe you have created or the enemy has placed in your life, but it doesn't matter. Lift up holy hands and say, Lord, deliver me, straighten me up, straighten up my life, and God will do it for you immediately in the name of Jesus. And so Jesus saw her and he called her forward. Imagine, wow, Jesus saw me and is calling me like, wow, imagine her walking toward him and she moving slowly. Maybe she's in pain and she's bent over and she, don't, she doesn't even know that this is her big moment. You never know when it's your big moment. So stay ready in the name of Jesus. And so she went to him. She was obedient. She went. It's time to go. Come boldly to my throne of grace and mercy. Come boldly to my throne of grace and mercy. Listen, God said, I have healing for you. I have what you need. Come, 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 come boldly. And so he began to speak to her where others probably ignored her. And he spoke to what she needed. Some people want to talk to you about stuff that's irrelevant or give you gifts that's irrelevant. You know I don't like eggs, so why are you giving me an egg sandwich? No, God's going to give you what you need. Woman, you are set free from your infirmity that had tied you down for 18 years. Men, all the men who are listening, God said you are set free from your infirmity, the familiar spirit that's been following you from your bloodline. Every generational curse, they're destroyed in the name of Jesus. That witchcraft that's been coming against you, bound and cast out because the greatest strong man lives on the inside of us and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And this woman, she was standing straight up y'all and began to praise the Lord. I, I, I can imagine her doing that church dance. Listen, 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 dancing and screaming and crying. Hey, Lord, you saw me. I thought you forgot about me. And she's praising him. She's standing straight up, y'all. Hallelujah. And she's crying and praising him loudly. I can see it. And everybody's looking and seeing the power of God being made manifest. Sometimes you're going through because you are the only Bible that anybody will read. And people are watching to see how your story is going to finish. <laughs> people are watching to see how this chapter of your life is going to close out. And God said they're going to see you straightened out. Your finances straightened out. Your marriage straightened out. Your children straightened out. Your health, your soul, your spirit, your, your career straightened out. Your ministry straightened out for the glory of God. For the glory of God, in the name of Jesus, we are crippled no more. We are, par we are paralyzed no more. We are paralyzed no more. Because when you go to God crippled and paralyzed and, and, and deficient or whatever, God is going to restore the years the palm of worms ate up in your life. God is going to restore the years the palm the palm of worms ate up in your life. Let me say it again. God is going to restore the years the palm of worms ate up in your life. When you go to God and everything is dried up, broken down, confused and chaotic, God said, forget the former things. Because we all I do a new thing for you. It's springing up. Don't you perceive it? I'm making a way for you in the wilderness. I'm giving you the living water of my word in every situation where there's drought and famine. In the name of Jesus, you're going to see growth. You're going to see progress, godly progress. You're going to see successful. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You're going to see victory. You're going to see the answers to your prayers. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Imagine this woman's future after she was straightened out. Maybe she wasn't even married. She was able to go on and get married, having children, have children, able to go on and pursue her career. If, if it happened in this time, right? Go, go pursue her career. 
go out there and do what God had called her to do from before the foundation of the earth because these things come to cripple you, to hinder you, and to block you from your destiny. That's why we got to continue to hunger and thirst after righteousness because God will fill you up. Continue to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness because God will give you what you need. It might look like he's not coming, but he's always on time. He's always on time. 18 years she was bound. But when Jesus came to her, in less than a minute, she was set free. And she was free indeed. And nobody could stop, stop her breakthrough. The, hypocr the hypocrites couldn't stop it. The haters couldn't stop it. Because nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's get ready for communion. The dog then took my bread. But, but it's all, God, God is good, you know? <laughs> God is good. Doug is going to get me another piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> in the name of Jesus, glory to God. So go ahead, victorious ones, and get your, your bread, cracker, whatever you have, a piece of peanut. <laughs> go ahead and get it. Amen. And we're going to have communion. And we're going to feast on this word all throughout this day. Remember this story, okay? Luke 13, remember this lady. This, this, this story is just amazing. It's powerful. Amen. God is coming to see about all of us. All right, so 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29. Go ahead and prepare yourself for communion. Ask God to forgive you of any sin that you have committed. Amen. And so it says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. Amen. Lord, we thank you for communion. We do this in remembrance of you, Lord Jesus. And for anybody who's listening to this, and perhaps you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you want God to straighten out your life, all you got to do is say this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I know I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe Jesus Christ, your son, died for my sins. Right now, I turn from my sins and return to you. Right now, I turn from my sins and return to you, Lord. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, and I believe in my heart that you, Father God, raised him from the dead, so now I am saved. Thank you for saving me, Father God, through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. You say this prayer, start reading your Bible, going to a Bible teaching church, and continue to be faithful to God, and God will continue to straighten up your life. Amen. And I want to release this blessing upon all of us. Number six, 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And I release Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And Lord, I thank you, oh God, for this word. I thank you for communion, oh God. I thank you for what you have taught us. Father, I cover this message, this prayer, and everything with the blood of Jesus. And I pray, oh God, that testimonies will come forth, oh God, the testimonies will come forth of your healing power, healing physically, Father God, healing maritally, parentally, financially, 
and all around. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Be blessed, victorious ones. And we will do this again next week. Bye, everyone.